Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on Microsoft Office 365 Link. My name is Sarah and today we're going to talk about how to use the various techniques within Link to start a live video chat. We will also discuss the many features within Link that can be used during a live video chat. Today's video will go a bit more in depth and we have a lot to learn, so let's get started. Once you have launched Microsoft Link, your contacts will appear in the window. Each of your contacts is displayed with a colored bar to the left of their photo or icon. This colored bar indicates whether or not the person is available. Before trying to initiate a video chat, you should first determine whether or not the person you want to contact is available by checking the color of their status bar. As you can see here with my status, green indicates available, red means busy, and so on and so forth. If your desired contact is available, the easiest way to initiate a video chat is to right-click the contact and select Start a Video Call from the top of the selection window. Once you do this, a window will pop out notifying you that video is being started and your call has begun. Let's call Dan. Hey Dan, we're doing an Office 365 demo today. All right. Say hello to everyone at home. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for answering. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Before I get into discussing the many features of Link Video Chat, I want to show the other way that you can initiate a video chat. First, click on the person you want to call. When you do this, a contact card will pop out to either the right or left of the contact. Select the list icon located on the end of the card and choose Start a Video Call from the top of the list. This will begin a video chat just like we did before. Hey! Hey! Thanks for answering again! Yeah. I'm going to show everyone all the cool features we can use in our chat window, so can you keep in our call? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Bye. We're going to go ahead and pause our video so we don't distract Dan all day. Now let's get into the features. We're just going to start from the left and work our way through. So first off, if you select the I am button at the top of your chat window, it will open a text area where you can message your video recipient at the same time you are video chatting. You will find that you will use this feature quite often. The next features I want to talk about are those listed in the video tab. The first six features shown when you select this tab pertain specifically to your video options. For example, you can pause or end your video sharing, you can hide or show your own video preview, you can expand or shrink your video preview. You can make the video window pop in or out of the chat window. And you can view your video chat window full screen. For other video chat settings, you can open the settings menu from the bottom of this tab. The next set of features is located under the share tab. This tab holds options for sharing your desktop, PowerPoints, whiteboards, and even custom polls. To share your desktop with the call recipient, simply select desktop, or in my case, main monitor, because I'm using two monitors. With this feature, you can maneuver through your desktop and anyone on the call can see your navigation. You can even give a call recipient control of your desktop, allowing them to move through your computer just as you are. If you would like to stop sharing your desktop, simply select the Stop Sharing button located at the top of the share bar. There's also an option for you to share one single program on your computer instead of sharing your entire desktop. For example, maybe you want your colleague to proofread a document, but you don't want them to see any other documents you may have open. You can share capabilities for them to see only one program. You can give control in this feature as well, so your colleague can edit your document right in front of you. To use the single program sharing feature, click on Share. 
select Program, and choose the program you would like to share. Click Share. Hey Dan, can you see the document I'm sharing? Yeah. You want to go ahead and make some edits so everyone can see this cool feature? Sure. Alrighty. As you can see, Dan is editing the document right in front of us. Another great feature in this location is the sharing PowerPoints feature. When you select to share a PowerPoint, you can choose from any presentation on your computer. Choose the presentation you would like to share, and once it loads, all call participants can view your presentation. You can present the information, ask for feedback, and even add emphasis icons like arrows or check marks. You or the call attendees can even insert text boxes and images to leave notes for feedback or editing ideas. Also, you can allow other members in the call to take over as presenter, giving them control over the slide transitions. This feature is useful because oftentimes, once a presentation has concluded, the call attendees discuss the material. The Give Control feature allows attendees to easily access slides for reference and discuss the content in real time. And while all this is going on, you can still send IMs to any of the members in the call. You can have private chat conversations with one or all of the attendees. Another great feature included with the PowerPoint sharing is the Look Ahead thumbnail option. This button is located at the bottom here, and when you select it, you can move away from the presentation and look ahead at the next slides to see what's to come. This feature is very handy if you were, for example, invited to a video call with several people on it. You can quickly check to see if the presenter's information is valuable to you and determine whether or not your time could be better used doing something else. Let's keep moving along with the sharing features. Here I'll show you the whiteboard feature. A whiteboard is basically like a giant drawing canvas. You can insert text boxes, leave notes, place emphasis icons, and even insert images. This feature is great when you want to share a document, photo, or image like a blueprint. Others can place arrows and lines to show you exactly where they would like to see edits or changes. One of the last features I'm going to show is actually really neat. You can create custom polls and share them with all attendees of the call. The members can anonymously vote on the poll and you can choose to share the poll results or keep them private. The anonymous feature is very valuable here. For example, you can ask the attendees what they thought of the presentation or get your employees to vote on a caterer for a team outing. There's a lot of functionality in this sharing feature. The next feature I'm going to show is the attachment sharing feature. In the top right hand corner of your video window, there is a paperclip icon. Click this icon and select the add attachment button. Choose the item you would like to send to the attendees and select open. The item will load and attendees of the video call can access your document and save it to their own computer. A smaller but very useful feature is the hold button. The hold button is located at the top right hand corner of the window. When selected, it will pause your video and mute all sound. This feature is useful, for example, if you are video chatting at your desk and someone else comes by and needs to talk to you. To re-enter the call, simply click the resume call button at the top of the window. So as you can see, Link Video Chat has several capabilities that can be useful to you every day. That is all I have to show for today. If you would like to learn more about Microsoft Link or any other Office 365 product, check out our Facebook and Twitter pages and visit our channel here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I hope this tutorial was useful. See you soon!